Okay, chapter 9.5, the sine and cosine ratio. So in chapter 9.4, we focused on, where am I? Oh, here I am. Hey, what's up? Uh, so in chapter 9.4, we covered uh, the tangent ratio, just to give you a feel for what these uh, trigonometric ratios are. So now we're going to do the other two, sine and cosine. So the essential question of this chapter section is, how is a right triangle used to find the sine and cosine of an acute angle? And is there a unique right triangle that must be used? <clears throat> so let triangle ABC be a right triangle with acute angle A. Acute angle A right here. The sine of angle A and cosine of angle A written as S-I-N without the E, sine, that's not pronounced sin. A lot of students say sin A, it's sine A and cosine A without the I-N-E on cos. So it's just sine, cosine, A, respectively, and they're defined as follows. So the sine of angle A equals the length of the leg opposite to angle A, which is BC. So let me get my highlighter. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. Now remember, tangent was opposite over adjacent. Sine, we're going to take the opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to just do this and this so you can see it. All right. And here is our adjacent side. Well, cosine is the length of the ad leg adjacent. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. So it will be adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse is cosine. So what you will learn in this section is how to use the sine and cosine ratios, find the sine and cosine of angle measures in special right triangles, special right triangles again, chapter nine two, and solve real life problems involving the sine and cosine ratios. So let's take a look at these new trig functions. Okay, so I kind of explained this on the first page, but using the sine and cosine ratios. The sine and cosine ratios are trigonometric ratios for acute angles that involve the lengths of a leg and the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So the core concept says sine and cosine ratios. Let triangle ABC be a right triangle with acute angle A. Okay, so we have an acute angle A. The sine of angle A and cosine of angle A written as sine A and cos A are defined as follows. So I've already done this. The sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse. So here's what we're going to do. We're actually going to now um, abbreviate this. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, green over red. And the other one is adjacent over hypotenuse. So actually, let me take this and shrink it down. It won't let me. All right, let's delete it then. And then I'll just do this, and I'll do this, and I'll do this. And all I want to do is HYP. So it's OPP over HYP and ADJ over HYP. And therefore, it's leg opposite of A, which is BC over AB. And for cosine, AC over AB. And I'm going to be color coding these as we go, just to, till we get a feel for this. So let's take a look at the first example. Okay, so example one says to find the sine and cosine ratios. It says find the sine of S. Let me color code these. So what colors can we use? I'll use green for the sine of S. Let's find the sine of S, the sine of R, the cosine of S, and the cosine of R. Okay. Write each answer as a fraction and as a decimal rounded to four decimal places. Okay, so let's take a look. So, so let's start with my green pen. I'm going to find the sine of S. So you write the sine of angle S equals. And first thing I'm going to do is there's S. With respect to S, I want to know sine, which is opposite, which is here and hypotenuse, which is over here. So I will color code those. So we are going to take um, the sine of S. Let me get my highlighter. Um, let's use green for opposite. OK, 
okay? Opposite side and hypotenuse. I don't know, it doesn't really matter what color I use. I'm just gonna use the yellow. No, I can't write in yellow. So let's use orange. So here's the hypotenuse. So it's, those are a little thick, aren't they? Let's fix that. So if I'm going to do opposite in green, let's thin that out a little. Here's my opposite side and orange for my hypotenuse. Okay, so it's opposite over hypotenuse. So I get my pen and so I'm gonna write that. I'm gonna write OPP divided by HYP. Let me use orange to do that. Okay, so sine of S is opposite over hypotenuse. And in the book, it says opposite angle S, all right? Um, but it's with respect to the angle you're looking for. So we'll just leave it at that. So let me go back to my green. So the sine of S is the opposite side, 63, over the hypotenuse, 65. And I can't reduce that. So I'll just leave that 63 over 65. And I put that in my calculator to find an approximation rounded to four decimal places. So open my calculator up here and clear and share screen. Okay, so I'm going to say uh, 63 divided by 65. Whoops. 63, the divide button didn't work, and then I hit nine instead of five. And I got an approximation of four decimal places. The fifth one's less than five, so you just cut it off, 0. 0.9692. Okay, so the sine of S is 0. 0.9692. Now I'm going to do sine of R. Switch to blue. The sine of R equals opposite of R divided by hypotenuse. Okay, sine of R now is here. So now the opposite is blue. That's right here. Okay, right there. And let me switch back to my pen, blue. And that's going to equal the opposite of R16, which is side ST, if you will. The book shows that, I'm just skipping over that. And the hypotenuse is RS, which is 65. So maybe I shouldn't. So the book is showing this. Let me move, whoops, control Z. Uh, let me move these three things over and squeeze that in there and name the sides just to get the feel for this. So the sine of S is RT divided by um, the hypotenuse, which is RS. Here, it's going to equal ST divided by the hypotenuse RS. Okay, and that's going to equal 16 over 50, 65. And so I just say 16 divide 65. So the sine of R is 0. 0.2461. Rounded, oh, the five makes that a two. 0. 0.2462. Okay, so there's sine of S, sine of R. Now let's switch to cosine. And I'm gonna use purple here. So the cosine of S equals now, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So what's adjacent to S? S is right here. Next to S is ST. And the hypotenuse is always going to be the same. That is RS. And then we simplify by substituting in. So ST is 16 over the hypotenuse, 65. And that is going to be an approximation of 16 divide 6, 5, enter. 0.24615 makes this a 2. So this is 0.2462. 2. 
All right, and then finally, the cosine of R. So the cosine of R equals, again, cosine is adjacent. So we're going to be adjacent to angle R over the hypotenuse. Okay, and that is going to equal, well, adjacent to R. R is right here. Adjacent is RT. So I'm going to put RT divided by my hypotenuse, which is still RS. And that is going to equal 63 over 65. And that is approximately, well, I've already done that. It's 0.9692. So when doing this, you might have noticed that there's a pattern here. The sine of S equals the cosine of R. And the sine of R equals the cosine of S. Okay? Because the opposite to S is the adjacent to R. Think about that a second. The opposite to R is adjacent to the angle S. So the sides interchange. So sine of S equals cosine R, and the sine of R equals cosine S. This happens, this always happens. The sine of one angle equals the cosine of the other. Acute angle. All right, so that is an introduction to sine and cosine ratios. And so now practice this new process on numbers three and four in your exercises. All right, core concept, sine and cosine of complementary angles. Okay, let me stop right there. Let me go to a shape here. Let me get a right triangle. Let me draw it out here. Let me change its shape just a smidge. And let's pop it over like this. So let's just do a basic, simple three, four, five special right triangle. Okay, that is the <clears throat> special right triangle, three, four, five. Well, not special right triangle. 30, 60, 90s are special rights. This is... um. Triple. This is a right triangle triple. So the sine cosine complementary angles, the sine of an acute angle is equal to the cosine of its complement. So if this angle here is a certain degree, so this is angle A, this is angle B, and the right angles always C because your hypotenuse is C when you do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so the sine of angle A equals the cosine of 90 minus A, which is equal to the cosine of B. Okay? So if angle A is here, then the sine of angle A, for this example, real quick, I'm going to say the sine of A equals the cosine of 90 degrees minus A which equals the cosine of B. So the sine of A here is opposite over hypotenuse, which is four fifths. And that equals the cosine of 90 degrees minus angle A. Because if angle A is say 40 degrees, and this is 90, well, the acute angles in a right triangle are always complementary because the sum of the angles has to add up to 180. And when I have a 90 degree angle, the other two have to add up to 90 to give me 180. So what this is saying is the cosine of 90 degrees minus A, 90 degrees, this angle minus this will give us the other angle cosine B. Well, the cosine of B is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is four over five. And as you can see, the sine of A equals the cosine of B. And so it just keeps repeating here. The cosine of A equals the sine of B. The sine of B equals the cosine of A. And the cosine of B equals the sine of A. And they're all complements to each other. And that's basic, basically the core concept in a nutshell. So let's take a look at this. Okay, example two is rewriting trigonometric expressions. So this just simply says to write the sine of 56 degrees in terms of cosine. So write sine. 56 degrees equals, and if we go back to our last core concept, sine of the angle is cosine 90 minus that angle. So I'm going to write cosine of 90 degrees 
minus 56 degrees. That's my A. All right, so cosine of 90 minus A. Well, this is our sine of A. Sine of A equals cosine 90 minus A. Sine of A equals cosine 90 minus A. And the parentheses are around just the 90 and the 56. So that's how you set it up. And that's going to equal the cosine of 56 degrees. I'm sorry, not 56, 34. So 90 minus 56 is 34 degrees. So all we're doing is taking the sine of one acute angle and changing it to cosine of its complement. So 56 plus 34 is 90. And that's it. That's how you do this. So with that, now practice it on problem numbers 9, 10, 13, and 14 in your exercises. OK, example three is finding leg length. So it says, find the value of x and y using sine and cosine round your answers to the nearest tenth. Always read your what they say to do when you're done. Make sure you round to the right decimal place. So in this case, we're given angle 26 as our reference angle. It says, find the value of x and y using sine and cosine. So x is opposite the 26 degree angle. And 14 is my hypotenuse. And y is adjacent to 26. So I'm just going to label my diagram up opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse like so. And then I'm going to find the value of x and y by using our trig ratios. So the sine of 26 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. And the opposite is x. And the hypotenuse is 14. OK, so I'm going to write sine of 26. Actually, I don't want to write it like this. I'm going to rewrite it down below. So I'm going to write the sine 26 degrees, substitute my givens in, and opposite is x, and hypotenuse is 14. I want to get rid of that denominator of 14 by multiplying both sides by 14. These cancel, and I'm going to get x equals 14 times the sine of 26 degrees. I'm going to get my calculator out. And I'm going to just simply put in my calculator, 14 sine 26, and hit enter. And that's going to give me 10.675. Remember, round to the nearest tenth. This 7 will make this 6 a 7. So this rounds to 10.7. And when you're rounding, use a, an approximation symbol, not the equal sign. So x is approximately 10.7. Seven. Okay, um, I'm going to highlight this. I want to show you something so that you don't make the same mistake when doing your problems. Um, I'm going to leave that highlighted. I'm going to leave it as is. This answer is not correct. I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. I'm going to show you what happens next. So now I want to take the cosine because now I want to find y and that's adjacent and I know hypotenuse 14. So now I'm going to say the cosine of my reference angle 26 degrees is going to equal adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be the cosine of 26 degrees equals and adjacent is y and my hypotenuse is 14. And so now I'm going to multiply both sides by 14, just like I did before. So I get y, these cancel, equals 14 times the cosine of 26 degrees. OK, so I go to my calculator and I say 14 cosine 26 and hit Enter. And I got y is approximately 9.1. OK, so I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to highlight that. And I want you to look at this. Whenever you're doing a math problem, don't just find an answer and say, OK, I'm done. <clears throat> Notice the diagram here. X is the shorter leg. Y is the longer leg. Yet I got an answer for, as 10.7 for X and 9.1 for Y. Well, Y can't be shorter than X from the diagram. So what happened? Well, I turned my calculator on. And it automatically reverted back to radians. We have not done radians yet. So I need to go in now and click mode. Press the mode button on your calculator. 
and the third one down says radian, I have to arrow down there to radian over to degree and hit enter. I was not in degree mode, but this told me I wasn't in degree mode when my answers didn't make sense. So now I'm going to fix this. I'm going to say 14 sine 26 now that I'm in degree mode, and it came out to be 6.1. So this is incorrect. X is approximately 6.1. And then to get Y, I want to do 14 cosine of 26 and hit enter, and I get 12.6. So now I have Y is approximately 12.6, not 9.1. Now when I look at this, Y is longer than X, and that makes more sense. So this is my answer. So make sure you are in degree mode when doing these trig ratios. Okay, so now try number 17 and 18 in your exercises. Okay, now it says to find the sine and cosine of special right triangles. Example four, finding sine and cosine of 45 degrees. Find the sine and cosine of a 45 degree angle. So let's just look at this real quick. Remember the two acute angles are complementary. So if you have one 45 degree angle, the other has to be 45. So if this is A, this is B, and this is C. Now, a 45, 45, 90 triangle from chapter 9, 2 is x, x, x square root 2. Okay, to make life easy, we're going to make x 1. So, therefore, it's 1, 1, and 1 square root 2, which is just simply the square root of 2. So, this side I'm going to make 1, this side's 1, and this side is the square root of 2. Okay, so... That's why 9.2 was so important. They gave us an angle measure. They didn't give us a side length. This could have been 2, 2, 2 square root 2 or 10, 10, 10 square root 2. But we had to know the setup. All right, so now let's find the sine. The sine of angle B. I called it B, so let's say the sine of B equals sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And write this every single time so you remember. And then the sine of 45 degrees, substitute our givens, sine of 45 is opposite one over hypotenuse square root two, okay? Um, unfortunately, this is in, this is irrational in the denominator. And so we want to rationalize the denominator. So I need to multiply by the square root of two over the square root of two. Anything divided by itself is one. And so when I do that, I get one times the square root of two, which is the square root of two. And I get the square root of two times the square root of two, which is the square root of four. And the square root of four is two. So the sine of 45 degrees is the square root of two over two. It did not say to round, um, but I would stop right here since it didn't say to round, but the book did show them in with four decimal places. So I will do that. So I'm gonna just take my calculator second quit clear and i'm just going to take the square root of two divided by two and that's approximately 0 0.7071 okay so the sine of 45 degrees is root two over two or 0 0.7071 now i'm going to find the cosine of 45 degrees actually i'm going to call it b sub i'm going to Write a formula, cosine B equals, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so ADJ divided by HYP, substitute, cos, oops, SOS, uh, cosine of B, which is 45 degrees, equals adjacent, which is also one over square root two, and obviously we have to rationalize this again, and so that's going to be the square root of two over four once again, and no sense putting it in the calculator, they are equal. And that's what this example was showing. The sine of 45 equals the cosine of 45 because the opposite and adjacent to the angle are equal. So therefore the ratios are equal and therefore the decimals are equal. Okay, so now you should practice this on number 23 in your exercises.
Okay, example five is finding the sine and cosine of 30 degrees. Find the sine and cosine of a 30 degree angle. Now here's another special right triangle. So if this is 30 degrees, this angle up here is complementary, which is 60 degrees. So if I call this A, this B, and this C, then we have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And the remember it is an equilateral triangle cut in half. So the hypotenuse is 2x. The 30 degree side opposite the 30 is x. And from the Pythagorean theorem, it's x square root 3. Okay, so if I call this 1, this would be the square root of 3, and this would be 2. So across from the 30 is 1. Across from the 60 is the square root of 3. And across from the C or the hypotenuse is length 2. So that's the most basic 30, 60, 90 triangle, 1, 2, square root 3. So it says find the sine and cosine of the 30 degree angle. So my reference angle is B. So I'm going to say the sine of B equals opposite over hypotenuse. Substitute my givens, the sine of 30 degrees equals 1 over 2, which equals 0 0.5. Okay, that one doesn't have to be an approximation. It's exact. One half is 0.5. So the sine of 30 is 0.5. And, it's, and they have been going out four decimal places, so I will do that. And then finally, we are going to do the cosine. Cosine of B equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, write a formula, substitute the givens, and adjacent to 30 is square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So the cosine 30 degrees is approximately square root of 3 over 2 in approximated is um, square root 3 divided by 2. And that comes out to be 0 0.8660. Okay, so the sine of 30 degrees is 0 0.5, and the cosine of 30 degrees is 0 0.8660. Okay, so that's how you find sine and cosine of a 30 degree triangle or angle. Now practice on number 24 in your exercises. Okay, example six, solving real life problems. Recall from the previous lesson that an angle upward line of sight make, makes with a horizontal line is called the angle of elevation. That angle downward line of sight makes with, makes with horizontal line is called angle of depression. So if I have this skier standing here, and he looks straight out and then looks down the slope, the angle of depression is right here. This would be the angle of elevation if the skier was here looking up. Elevation is up, depression is down. So this is the angle of depression, 21 degrees. And it says you are skiing on a mountain with an altitude of 1,200 feet. So that's our side over here. The angle of depression is 21 degrees. Find the distance x you travel down the mountain to the nearest foot is what we're rounding to. Okay, so label your diagram. Here's the angle of reference. This is opposite. The right angle's here, so this is the hypotenuse. So since we, with reference angle, we have opposite and hypotenuse, we will use sine. So the sine of... Um, let's call that angle A, this angle B, and this C. So the sine of A equals opposite over hypotenuse. And substitute our givens, the sine of 21 degrees equals the opposite, which is 1,200 over X. Okay, and in a prior video from chapter 9.3, I showed you that if you have a value in the numerator and a denominator of a variable, then you just simply take the numerator and move it over to the other side, okay? So that's going to give me 1,200 divided by the sine of 21 degrees 
equals x. I'm going to put that in my calculator. 1, 2, 0, 0, divide parentheses, sign 21, close those parentheses and hit enter. And I got x is approximately, we're rounding to the nearest foot, 3348.5 rounds to 3349 feet. Okay, so the skier will travel from A to B, 3,349 feet. So now take a look at 27 in your exercises. Okay, so that brings us to the end of chapter 9.5. Here are the exercises I assigned. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.